All right, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another Team of Night video. Um, so right here we got the Plane Patrol archetype. Uh, so let's just go real quick into what the gimmick of the real archetype is, and it basically centers around Blackbeard, the Plane Patrol captain, and his effect is that depending on what attribute your opponent controls, you can basically special summon from the extra deck uh, one of your corresponding Plane Patrol monsters with that same attribute. Currently, there's only light, fire, and dark, but hopefully they will get newer support in the future, which will increase the options and actually make them viable for any matchup. But then again, you also do gain the advantage of drawing a card just off that effect alone. So now let's go into the deck and basically see what we got here. Here we got the two money cards that are sitting around nine to 10 bucks, and there's good reason since they are basically smaller versions of your Blackbeard. And so, realistically, you play about nine copies of Blackbeard, just these two don't have the draw effect and also have different corresponding effects whenever they're sent from the hand to the graveyard. Let's start off with Redbeard, the lesser of the two, since basically his effect is whenever he's sent from hand or field to the graveyard, you can just equip him to another one of your Plum Patrol monsters that you control, which is actually not bad. And you got Whitebeard, which is whenever he's sent from the field or hand to the graveyard, you can... Uh, special summon another plane patrol from the deck, which is arguably much better. Now let's get into Golden Hair, the newest plane patrol, and Bluebeard, the plane patrol shipwright. So Golden Hair has the effect where you can discard a plane patrol monster, and you can special summon her from your hand. And then whenever she is in the graveyard, you can special summon just a card in general and just special summon her back to the field. So then we got Bluebeard, which, let's just say, uh, you control another Plum Patrol, you can special summon him to the field. And then whenever he leaves the field, let's say you, like, link him off or something, you basically can discard a card and then draw a card. And since all of them do have whenever they leave the hand effects, that can lead to some pretty decent combos. And you also might draw into a combo piece. Like Black Eyes, the Plum Patrol Sea Guide, which is definitely much needed support that the archetype needed so basically um his effect in hand is whenever you you need a plunder patrol card in the graveyard so let's say uh you have golden hair in the graveyard you use black eyes effect to target to that special then add back to hand so it's pretty good and you get a free special summon uh and so whenever he leaves the field from either being discarded or linked away you can uh, special summon one of your Plum Patrol monsters that's equipped to another one of your Plum Patrol monsters back to the field in defense mode. So, Redbeard, as you can see, if he's equipped, you can just link this guy away, and then you get special summon back Redbeard. And now we have the spells. And first we have Field Spell, Plum Patrol Shipyard, Emblem of the Plum Patrol, and lastly... Plunder Patrol, Ship, Shape, Ship, Shipping. So let's get into the Field Spell first, since this is definitely one of the more important cards for the archetype. So Plunder Patrol, Shipyard, basically you can discard a card, and you can add any Plunder Patrol card from your deck to your hand. And that's already pretty good. And once, like, as I've been saying before, every single Plunder Patrol has a basically discard effect, so it plays very well into the archetype. And for every Plum Patrol you have in your spell, like any Plum Patrol card you have in your spell and trap card zone, all of your Plum Patrol cards gain 500 attack. So every single one of your Plum Patrol cards could gain 2,500. And then it even has a recycling effect where you can destroy one of those said uh, Plum Patrol cards in your spell and trap card zone, and then you can bring this back to your hand. So that's pretty good. Emblem of the Plum Patrol basically works as a less restrictive form of Captain. And it is an equip spell. So basically, you equip it to one of your Plum Patrols. Already, it can no longer be targeted. I believe it's just targeted. Yeah. Uh, your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. Yeah. And then basically, you can send it to the graveyard and special summon a Plum Patrol card from the... Uh, you can special summon a Plum Patrol card from the extra deck 
based off of just a card in the graveyard and or on the field. It does not restrict you to your opponent's graveyard, which is why it is definitely at least a two of, I would say. Uh, no, no running less than two. And in the mirror match, which is very unlikely, but in the mirror match, you can just equip this off to your opponent's monsters to then use them as your, uh, I guess, equip target. I don't really know what I would call that, per se. And then ship, 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 shipping is basically just the fusion spell, which uh, definitely helps. Since so sometimes you gotta, like, hard fusion to get into lies, and then we'll get into why that's kind of important later. But basically, you can also banish this away from the graveyard, and you can equip a Plunder Patrol monster in the graveyard uh, to one of the Plunder Patrol monsters you control, which is also decent for combos, but definitely not as important as the other two. So, let's move on to the non-archetypal traps. Firstly, terraforming, just because you want to see Shipyard in your hand as consistently as possible. Uh, then we have Pot Desires, since the deck has no real other way to, like, have very consistent draw power and you already basically are playing almost everything at three so why not use such a like good advantage card next is foolish burial goods and foolish burial goods is basically to send your ship 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 shipping to the graveyard but sometimes you also might need your uh shipyard so you can send it to the graveyard to get rid of one of your equipped plum patrol monsters then you can basically get it back to your hands, so then you can use it. So it's it's decent. It's it's not like you don't have to do that, but I definitely think it's like a decent like thing that your opponent might not be expecting. Then we run two salvage. Even with the new kind of recycling that Black Eyes does bring to the archetype, I do think it can sometimes be lacking. So I would say one salvage if this wasn't a desires build. So I would I sadly have to run two and usually it ends up bricking my hands, but I still always feel safer running it than not running it. And even then I can always side it out if I don't actually need it. And next we go to the one trap, which is Plunder Patrol Booty. And this is basically what allows the gimmick of the deck to actually work very consistently and reliably. So this card basically you can target one of your opponent's monsters and just change their attribute. So if it's wind and earth. This is your only real, like, kind of scapegoat to get out of being locked out of the extra deck, besides, like, just hard summoning everything. And it also, whenever it's activated, basically once per turn, you can just keep special summoning uh, Plum Patrol monsters from the graveyard and are shuffling them back into the deck. Which is very good. It does get destroyed, though, if you do not control any Plum Patrol cards. That is something to keep in mind. Doesn't usually ever, like, happen, but yeah. And I would say for hand traps, we are running in the main deck uh, Triple Ash Blossom, since it works in the archetype, and Triple Skullmeister, since it also works with the attributes. Uh, and Ash Blossom is just always, like, a good hand trap, just in general. And now for the final stretch of this, we have the extra deck, which I already kind of briefly went over what... Uh, captain did so basically you just target one of your uh, opponents like I guess Monsters just like like whatever their attribute is either in graveyard and or on the field. So it is a little more versatile than Like I guess it could be because I mean if it was just on field then it, it would be much more situational than it actually is But luckily it's also in grave um, so Yeah, then basically you target a effect monster, which does include himself, and you can basically just special summon one of your other patrol ships from the extra deck. Now let's go into those actual patrol ships. There are three of them. Plunder Patrol Ship Lies, Plunder Patrol Ship Brand, and Plunder Patrol Ship Mayork. Or Moik? I, I don't even know how to say that. But we try. So let's just start off with the fusion. The Fusion is definitely also another one of those money cards for the deck. So, already, you're looking about a uh, almost $30 investment just for, like, nine cards. But every considering that almost every other card in the archetype is easily under 4 bucks, I would say it's a decent investment. So, basically, the gimmick of the extra deck monsters is that all of them gain their effects 
to become quick effects if they are equipped with a Plunder Patrol monster. Or, I guess, card, since Emblem of the Plunder Patrol also exists. So yeah, basically, it's in general quick effect is that it can take one of it, the Plunder Patrol cards that is equipped to it, and you can just special them into the field. So let's just say White Beard is uh, equipped to it, and you can just special them it back to the field, and then use White Beard's effect on your opponent's turn to then uh, go and let's just say another lies. And so that's first kind of interaction you can do with that. And second effect is if it's equipped, you can discard a Plunder Patrol card, and then you can negate the a monster effect and destroy it so this is since this is your big monster negation that's definitely why it is such a high dollar card and then we have brand which probably could be played as a duo of but why not play like decent cards at three since this card just right off the bat gives all fiend monsters an attack boost which does include Skullmeister, since he's a fiend, that only has ever come up once, and that was because it was a really hard grind game. But, it, hey, you always gotta think about the interaction. And, so yeah, it's a level 8 Synchro Monster that just is actually generic, so I guess if you wanted to run a beatdown fiend deck, you could. But I, I wouldn't really recommend that. Um, so basically, its effect is you can discard a... Plunder Patrol card, and you get to banish a spell or trap your opponent controls. So this is basically your form of spell and trap removal, besides, like, other means, you know, like, actual, like, spell and trap removal cards. Which is honestly pretty good. I mean, its attribute's kind of odd, since the only real time it, uh, well, I mean, cause actually, no, it's actually really good, considering that almost every single deck runs Ash Blossom, that it, it's always gonna come up and be, you know, just like a free body on board. And with all of the effects, I forgot to mention, uh, they usually have the ability to let you add a card from the deck to the hand. So, I believe Lies is just generic, and it's just any Plunder Patrol card. Um, I believe Bran is a monster, and then Ma uh, the Xyz is a spell and trap. So the Xyz, which we run at 2, which is also generic, basically has the effect that uh, you can discard a Plunder Patrol card, then banish one of your opponent's effect monsters. I believe it specifically says effect monsters. Uh, yeah, one effect monster your opponent controls. So I guess against a Blue Eyes deck, it's not that great. But what are the chances? And basically, after that, you get to add a Plunder Patrol spell back to your hand. And it also has the effect that if it has Xyz materials, which most of the time it is not going to, you can, if one of your Plunder Patrol cards would be destroyed, you can uh, take off an Xyz material instead. Which is very good. And finally, just kind of like the generic support stuff, Salamangrate Amirage, since it is a very good Link 1. It's a very good way to get Golden Haired into the graveyard, so you can then uh, discard a card and then bring her back, and then go into your Blackbeard. Uh, it's kind of like a quick way to turbo it out. It also works with uh, Bluebeard, which then if you have Raven... No, I always want to call it, like, Raven Wing. I have no idea why. If you have Black Eyes in your hand, you can then recycle. Uh, special summon out uh, Black Eyes, special summon your Bluebeard. And then uh, go from there. So yeah, it is very interesting. I would say it's a very good card. One of the better Link 1s in the entire game. Like, I don't even think arguably it's just like one of the better generic Link 1s in the whole entire game. If you have access to it. And an oldie but a goodie, uh, Evil Swarm Exiton Knight. This is just uh, a generic level 4 Xyz. I mean, I guess rank 4 Xyz. And you can detach a material from it, and then once per chain during your your main phase, your main phase, or your opponent's battle phase, if your opponent has more total cards in their hand and field than you do, quick effect, you can detach one material from this card, destroy all other cards on the field. Also, your opponent takes no further damage this turn. So it's just like a torrential tribute with legs, except it's not on summon. 
And we also run Bahamut Shark and Toad. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Toads are really good in the gate, and it also adds a water monster back from the graveyard. And it gives, basically, if you can get it out, it gives a captain just a free thing to equip. And then kind of, like, play with the attributes a little bit. It really just depends on your opponent, because sometimes it can just probably stall them out if they are a very hard normal summon base deck. And, I don't know. Hmm. That's, that's pretty much the whole rundown. Um, comboing with this deck is quite odd. I wouldn't really say there's one generic combo you're really trying to do. You're basically just always trying to end up with a black beard and usually just another monster on board. And I would guess the most optimal that I've seen the deck do is probably a black beard, Bahamut with one material, then Toad on the field, and usually just another card in hand, like an Ash Blossom or something like that. Because it's two form of negation and then a potential another interruption. Um, Blackbeard's effect is pretty good, but then I would say the extra, the extra deck monsters effects are kind of situational. Because if you can't really draw into a Planet Patrol card off of the effect of Black Blackbeard, you're kind of screwed in the sense that you can't really have any further response besides like I was able to summon a monster, which isn't terrible. Especially whenever it goes into brand, because that just means all of your fiends are now uh, 500 points stronger. Overall, I'd say the deck's pretty good. 